to pureimagedesign.com. I got a great friend of mine out here by the name of David Barba. We're going to go over some single stroke lettering and some uh, basic lettering where you go over it again and you re-sculpt it. Uh, we're going to go over a few different lettering styles, but for, at first I want to show you and uh, feature the Vega 2000 airbrush with the Spectratex paint in here. Um, the great thing about the Vega is that you can get extremely fine detail with this airbrush. We're talking hairline detail. And if you're bend a needle, bend a tip, you're maybe only out 10 bucks for the pair. Other airbrushes, you spend an arm and a leg. This airbrush does it all. Hobbies, uh, fine detail, automotive, you name it, murals, you could do it with this airbrush. But we're going to show you how fine it gets with the single stroke lettering. And we're going to go ahead and do some real tight letters. As you can see, here's some I just got done doing earlier. We're going to get close here and allow you to see how it gets done. A little windy out here, so excuse me if the uh, board moves. You get the idea on the capabilities of this airbrush. Go and do some pinstripes. some soft drop shadows. These are hairline drop shadows. I'm mainly, I'm barely pulling that trigger back maybe a hair. And that's how I'm able to get those real faint, subtle hairline drop shadows. And there's not a skip in the line work. That's what I'm talking about. That's a great airbrush when you don't see a skip in the line work. I'm gonna pull it back a little more. Freehand spray can. The cool little character's face on it. Real subtle flicks with the airbrush, little dagger strokes here and there. And it's, just, it's the way we do them that give it all the character and the flair. Got a DVD coming out here real soon that goes over a lot of basic airbrush designs as well as how to airbrush. Okay, and then we're gonna get real fine here with this airbrush. And we're gonna do some hairline cursive. As you can see, whatever I want this Vega 2000 airbrush to do, it'll do it. But it's all about practice. It's all about getting full control of the airbrush. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, sculpting your script right now. We're going to let David have control of the airbrush. And we're going to let David take his time, no pressure, and allow him to just relax and, and uh, do a cursive thing to the best of his ability. And then we're going to critique it. And we're going to show him where he can improve and where he can get better. So right now I'm going to go ahead and grab the video camera and let David get a hold of my airbrush. David, you're on the camera, so take your time, relax. This is David Barber here. And David, just go ahead and, uh, you know, do a little bit of messing around, warm up, and then go ahead and start doing some cursive. David now is doing the dagger, starburst. Getting warmed up. And go ahead and just do any, a name anywhere, wherever you want, David, so we can show the YouTube audience on your style and uh, where you might 
need some improvement, if any. As you can see, David has been painting for a while. He got some real good control of the airbrush. He's been doing off and on for quite a bit of time. And his lettering is, for the most part, pretty nice. Now when it comes to style, there's no wrong way of doing it, but when it comes to perfection, there is a better way of doing it. Okay. Looks good. Why don't you come right over here and do another name. This time, don't do single stroke, just do a come back over the lettering and uh, thicken it up to the best of your ability. Just do it, uh, you know, more, more concentrating on just building the lettering up. What I'm going to do next is do those same exact names, not too stylized, just in a basic cursive and show them probably how it can look a little better. Okay, as you can see here, it looks pretty good. The lettering is nice and stylized. Where you can probably use a little more work is just making the lettering a little ta taller and just thickening like the A up a little more in the proper area. The R looks nice, has some flair, but if we get too crazy with some of the letters, Sometimes you get picky customers and they'll think it'll look like a different letter. So I would probably work on that a little more. Let's go back to the Natalie and the Megan. It looks great, but what we need to work on is just thickening it up equally all the way to the point where we get down and then come up. So it needs to be equally thick on the downstroke all the way down then come up super thin. The end, he flared up high and it should be kind of equally thick until it drops down. The Natalie, thick, thin, thick all the way down, thin. So let's go ahead and show him how I would do it. Again, David does not mind taking critique. He realizes that he can get better and he appreciates the information. This is not all about who's better, this is about getting better. So. Okay, as you can see here, there's a difference. Everything's equally even. Equally thick on the downstroke. Equally thin going up. Now the R is a little taller than the rest of them when it should be lowercase. That's not too problematic, but you could flare it a little bit like that, but just not too much. Because then it gets confused on what letter that is. Keep, work a little bit more on keeping it thick all the way down. And that's how we make it look right. You want to come over here to Natalie? Again, I was talking about. Again, thick, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Now, it doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes you can have your lettering just thick at the top and come in thin 